Welcome, dear listeners, to Red Hunt, where I, Red, embark on a captivating journey into the intricate tapestry of relationships shared on the Reddit platform. Am I the antagonist for bringing my co-workers' personal items to work? I had a friend and co-worker named John who I worked with for over a year and was friends with for over six months. John and I spent quite a bit of time outside of work each week going to dinners, going to parties, etc. With a friend group that also included other co-workers. We were all friends and had a nice relationship inside and outside of work. Last year John contacted me while I was out of town stating that he and his partner had broken up and he was being kicked out, asking if he could stay with me as we have a spare room. After discussing the situation with my husband, we agreed to let him stay with us. We moved our vacation plans around to get home earlier so he had a place to go. Things started off pretty well with the new living situation. My husband and I discussed our boundaries and communicated them with him, and we really only had two hard rules, clean up after yourself and don't have drugs stored inside the house. There were the usual annoyances of a new roommate such as regularly leaving the refrigerator freezer door open, not cleaning up, using our food, detergent and hygiene supplies, etc. However, we brushed off the annoyances as just that, a temporary situation that we were helping a friend through. Shortly after moving in, John started to not include me in gatherings that we typically did together. Suddenly the friend group I had previously gone out with regularly was meeting up without me knowing, or it was a last minute thing I was clearly not invited to, but he would tell me stories about how much fun they had after. John continued to become more distant and eventually stopped communicating with me outside of any direct work-related tasks. A few months after living with us he told us he has gotten approved for his own place and will be moving out in about a month. Things go on as they had, and about a week later he leaves in the middle of the night without communicating with us where he was going, or why he had moved out early and left the key on a table. I then discovered John had left items throughout the house. I waited over two weeks, and he still had not communicated with me about his items and was avoiding speaking to me at work. I took this as a sign that he was angry and did not wish to speak to me at all. The items he left looked like a mixture of important items such as a car title and jewelry, and sentimental items such as cards. This is the point where I may be the asshole. Work being the only place I knew where he was, I didn't know where he was staying before his move or where his new place was. I gathered his items in a box and brought them into work and placed them near his work locker. I didn't speak to anyone about what the items were or why I was bringing them, but I knew they were personal enough he would recognize that they were his when he saw them. He then cussed me out and said I was being petty and smearing our business in front of everyone. Am I the asshole for bringing his items back at work? Clearly he was avoiding any communication with you and leaving his personal belongings at your place without any explanation. You tried to do the right thing by returning his belongings to him in a neutral and public place. Am I the antagonist for RSVPing no to my brother's wedding for my family, even after he begged me to let us all attend? I, a 34-year-old woman, have a younger half-brother who is 26 and getting married. Our mom and my brother's dad were engaged for a few years when my brother was born. However, when he turned one, my mom found out that his dad was cheating on her. His dad then left and moved in with the other woman, whom he later married. From then on, my brother split his time between our mom and his dad equally. It was always uncomfortable when we were around his dad and stepmom, as she would constantly be hostile and insulting towards our mom. Despite this, our mom chose not to fight back or involve my brother in these conflicts, but he was aware of everything. When my brother turned 21, he had a big birthday party, and we were all in attendance. During the party, his stepmom called our mom yesterday's news and stated that she wasn't the type of woman a man would marry. In response, our mom fired back and mentioned that at least she didn't sleep with men in relationships. My brother overheard the entire exchange and scolded our mom for her words. Upset, our mom quickly left the party. I confronted my brother, questioning how he could allow his stepmom to speak to our mom that way, but scold our mom instead. He defended our mom, saying that she has always been better than engaging in such behavior, and he expects her to continue being the bigger person. I argued that he was no longer a little boy and shouldn't expect our mom to always tolerate the hate. Feeling disappointed, I decided to leave the celebration since I didn't want to support my brother at that moment. Though he asked me to stay, I explained that I couldn't remain when our mom was being disrespected. Due to the relentless insults from the other woman, our mom had to change her phone number and email addresses to escape her harassment. The other woman wouldn't leave her alone, even resorting to using other people's phones to send offensive messages. Thankfully, once our mom changed her contact information, she felt relieved as she no longer had to block numerous numbers. My brother knows about this situation, yet when he got engaged, he expressed his desire for both moms to walk him down the aisle before his fiancée's parents walk her. However, the other woman immediately made a snide comment about how he'd have one real and classy woman beside him on his wedding day. My brother said nothing, and our mom told him she wouldn't do it. She mentioned being fine with letting that bitch win since he seemed to prefer her company anyway. Our mom was upset, and my brother was upset with her response. He later vented to me about it, stating that our mom should do better and understand that he can't treat the other woman poorly. I countered by saying that he allows the other woman to treat our mom poorly. We argued, and I eventually told him to forget it. 
I informed him that my family, husband and kids, would not attend the wedding and that I refused to be civil to the person he kept defending. He pleaded with me to reconsider and even mentioned wanting my children to be part of the wedding. Nevertheless, I still declined the invitation, causing my brother to send numerous texts expressing his frustration with my response. Am I the asshole here? It's completely understandable that you wouldn't want to support your brother's wedding after he allows his dad's wife to continuously disrespect your mom. It's his responsibility to stand up for his family and not let them be treated like that. My coworkers stopped inviting me to lunch, also talking badly about me to everyone in my department. What do I do? Before it was automatic, the usual group of people I go to lunch with at work would ask me to join them or I would ask them. I noticed once that they made plans for dinner without including me, and it made me realize that they might not actually like me and were just being polite by inviting me. So from then on, whenever they invited me, I only went to lunch with them about half the time for a few weeks. However, things eventually went back to normal and we started going to lunch together all the time again. But now, in the past month, nobody is asking me to go to lunch anymore. They simply get up, ignore me, and leave without saying anything actively avoiding me. I can't even invite myself because they are obviously making a deliberate effort to exclude me from lunch or after work events. It's quite awkward and feels like I've been shunned. Additionally, my performance at work hasn't been great. I've been making mistakes, and my co-workers have been talking about them because they rarely make those kinds of mistakes themselves. I do have a few disabilities. I believe this is all stemming from one specific co-worker in our group who doesn't like me. I think this person constantly brings up my name to other co-workers, saying things like I've done this or that, acted a certain way, or that I'm annoying etc. I can tell from the way they normally speak to me that they have an issue with me. In fact, when I decided to attend a quarterly work social event last month, this co-worker said to me, oh, I haven't seen you at lunch recently, and then smiled at someone else in the group. The problem now is that not only does the entire department know that I make mistakes at work, but they also know that my lunch group has stopped inviting me and that this particular co-worker has been spreading negative things about me. I've never had to deal with anything like this before. It's consuming my thoughts 24-7, and all I can think about is that they are talking badly about me to everyone in the department, which really makes me sad. I constantly create negative scenarios in my mind, knowing that people don't like me. I can't stop it. In summary, my work lunch group has stopped inviting me because one co-worker who dislikes me is leading the exclusion. This co-worker speaks negatively about me during social events, and on top of that, I make mistakes at work that others don't, so the entire department now has a negative perception of me. The situation is completely new to me, and it's plaguing my mind 24-7. I constantly dwell on the idea that everyone is speaking poorly of me in the department, and it deeply saddens me. I can't seem to stop these negative thoughts from consuming me. That sounds really tough, and it's definitely understandable that it's weighing on your mind. It might be worth talking to HR or your manager about the situation to see if they can offer any guidance or help navigate the dynamics in your department. How do I provide better emotional support to my partner? My partner and I have been together for nine months, and she has a difficult relationship with her mom due to past abuse. She recently cut off contact with her mom and reached out to me for support. She questioned if she made the right choice and expressed sadness that she will never know for sure since she cut contact. I reassured her that she was not wrong and asked about her emotions. However, she kept focusing on whether she was right or wrong, and I wanted to shift her thinking. I suggested that labeling herself as right or wrong in this situation is her own judgment. We went back and forth on this topic, so I asked if having a relationship with her mom was even possible. She said it wasn't, and I suggested that dwelling on something she can't know can be unhelpful. I asked about her emotions again, but she refused my support and didn't want to discuss it further. I suggested seeing a therapist, but she said she had enough experience with therapists and can handle it herself. She then mentioned that I couldn't help her because of my own difficult relationship with my parents. This hurt me, as I had only made the therapist's suggestion after she ended the conversation. She apologized for upsetting me but maintained her view. She even suggested talking to others about her problem instead of me, claiming she was letting me off the hook. I feel hurt and invalidated. Was my support approach wrong? How can I improve in supporting her in the future? I feel beaten down by this situation. It sounds like you were genuinely trying to support your girlfriend through her emotions about her strained relationship with her mom, but she didn't seem to accept your support and even made comments about your own relationship with your parents. It's important to remember that everyone's experiences are different, and sometimes people may not understand or appreciate the support we offer. In the future, it might be helpful to have an open and honest conversation with your girlfriend about how you can better support her in a way that she finds helpful and validating. Mother gets angry because of a comment. I am a 31-year-old male, and I wanted to share this story to gain some perspective beyond my own wisdom. I recently took a vacation from work, spending five days with my parents, 
followed by two weeks with my girlfriend. When I returned, I spent my remaining days with my family, since I usually work seven days a week. This morning, my 51-year-old mom started discussing the dangers of alcohol with my stepdad. She mentioned that she got drunk and drove once but never repeated it. I contradicted her, recalling multiple instances from my childhood when she would drive under the influence, often after daily parties hosted by my aunt. My mom became angry and started yelling at me. I remained calm but stood by what I said. She argued that I couldn't judge her and that my dad, who wasn't very involved in my life, was the real issue. She insisted that I complain to him about his lack of involvement. My counterargument is that I don't have negative feelings towards someone who barely affected my life. The real issue for me is my mother, who treated me as an emotional husband and alternated between making me the scapegoat or golden child, depending on her convenience. As a kid, I experienced emotional abuse from her, so any wrongdoing on my part wasn't as significant compared to the fact that I was being mistreated by an adult. Eventually, I told her that yelling doesn't make her point valid. Working as a nurse in mental health, I encounter adults and teenagers on a daily basis who try to abuse me due to their poor emotional control and entitlement stemming from their past experiences. So, her behavior doesn't upset me as much because I see similarities between her and those individuals. I treated her how I handle them, sternly but respectfully, and she cursed at me in response. My stepdad found the situation amusing. Even though I am a guest, my mom expects me to do all the chores. I refused, stating that I wouldn't do that to him, especially since I hadn't made any significant messes. I had only been there for a night and the previous time I ate out and only used the bathroom. I don't believe I did anything wrong, but whenever I disagree, I'm suddenly labeled as an ungrateful and cowardly child by my mom. It makes me question whether it's even worth trying to maintain contact with her. One thing she was right about is that I am often absent and only reach out when I need something, like holding onto my mail or helping with my job-related paperwork, which I do compensate her for. I admit I have respect for my mom because I believe in karma and I don't want to disrespect my parent. I acknowledge the good things she has done for me and how she has been there for me countless times. However, there is a significant amount of disrespect when we disagree. While I don't think I have to tolerate it, I also don't think it's right to respond with hostility. The last time I openly disrespected my mom was when she verbally berated my nephew, telling him he would turn into a woman abuser like his physically abusive father. I cursed at her, and then a series of unfortunate events occurred in my life. This makes me worried, as I feel that karma may come back to haunt me for being rude to my parents, even though I felt justified. Additionally, my older sister believes I am the favored child while she is the outcast or black sheep. As I previously mentioned, I would switch between being the scapegoat or golden child depending on what was convenient for my mother at the moment. The only time my parents give me compliments is when they are angry with my older sister. It sounds like you're dealing with a lot of complicated dynamics in your family. It's never easy when there are unresolved issues, especially between parents and children. It might be helpful to seek therapy or counseling to navigate these relationships and find a healthier way to communicate with each other. My husband is deployed and doesn't seem to care about me. How should I bring this up to him? My husband is currently deployed with the military. We have been married for four years and have no children. I am in my final semester of college and working as a student teacher. I was advised not to have a job alongside my student teaching responsibilities, as it is essentially a full-time commitment without pay. Until now, we have always maintained separate accounts, and he knows I am responsible with money. Before he left, I asked if he could add me to his bank account and provide a debit card for emergencies. He assured me that I am already on his account and can withdraw money from the bank whenever needed, even without a card. I let it go and prioritized spending time with him before his departure. Shortly before Christmas, he left, leaving me responsible for buying gifts for his entire family. I chose the gifts without his input and he reimbursed me exactly for what I spent. However, none of his family members expressed gratitude for their presence. Money would not be such a concern if my husband didn't constantly inform me of his income every two weeks. He frequently brags about his earnings, sending me screenshots of his bank account balance. Although he is making good money, aside from the funds for his family's gifts, I haven't received any financial support. Whenever I mention wanting something, such as a t-shirt or new jeans, he promises to get them for me but never follows through. On my birthday I requested a set of books, to which he agreed. However, after waiting a month and asking if he had ordered them, he admitted he never did. I don't expect to rely on his money or receive extravagant gifts during his absence. However, since I am not currently earning, having some spending money would make me happy. It feels like he doesn't care about me anymore now that he's gone. Over a month ago, I expressed that I would appreciate a thoughtful gesture from him while we are apart for so long, even a handwritten letter. I have sent him two letters but he claimed he didn't have paper or pens and would need to purchase them. Yet a few days later, he sent me a photo with a notebook and pen, clearly visible. It hurts that he struggles to do something simple to make me happy. I hate to say this, but it genuinely feels like we are not even married right now. Our connection seems to have vanished since he left. I feel incredibly alone and unsupported by him. I am not sure how to approach this issue or if something else may be going on. Am I asking for too much? 
I welcome any advice or suggestions on how to handle this situation. It sounds like you're going through a really tough time right now, and it must be hard feeling like there's a lack of connection and care from your husband while he's deployed. It might be worth having an open and honest conversation with him about how you're feeling, expressing your needs, and seeing if there's something going on that you both can work through. You deserve to feel valued and cared for, even from a distance. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.